Hello guys, welcome into the actress vlog. I hope you are doing very well and everything is fine. So guys, today we're gonna talk about the self-tapes. Um, the self-tapes, the audition tapes, which we are able to record for the auditions. And thanks to actually those self-tapes, we have a possibility now to audition uh, for different parts and uh, you can, for example, I don't know, live in uh, UK, but you can audition for the film in States or you can live in Poland and you can audition for the film in Australia and you don't have to go there. You just simply can record the tape and send it to the director. So that's making our life much more easier. However, uh, I would like to today talk about this, how you're supposed to record this tape, which is very important. Um, recently, I um, have my very first proper experience as a casting director and I must say I was pretty much disappointed because um, when I posed the brief, I exactly uh, said what we need. I write in a briefing about what they have to record it and I give them instruction for the recording. So instruction was very clear and most of the people, unfortunately, who send the tapes, they didn't do it properly. It seems like they didn't read the instructions or they just don't really care how they're gonna look like. So um, most of the time for all of our audition tapes, we're using cell phones, so cell phones. And the first rule of, um, of recording yourself uh, is, um, first of all, memorize your lines. Of course, you can read as well, but in general, I'm recommending more to memorize the lines, especially when it's like uh, not too many of them, because it's just easier to play, because you're not concentrate anymore on the piece of paper in front of you, but you actually concentrate on your character um, and now the technical part which is very very important when you're recording the tape never record yourself like that never always record yourself horizontal so casting director always want to horizontal look another thing which is very important when you're recording the tape Never ever keep the phone in your hand because you're gonna have this shaky picture because you're talking, you're giving the emotions and everything and everything is shaking and you can see here now the what I have in front of me, how I'm recording myself is not in bright. It's not, not, it's not. Um, the best thing is just to put your uh, camera on um, a small tripod or if you don't have a tripod uh, just you know um, adjust somewhere camera on the table or somewhere so you can have you know in a straight position like that in front of you you always remember to record yourself like leave a little bit above your head so like like this you're gonna see in a second on that recording and like up to here that's the best that's the best angle so we're showing a little bit of shoulders, a little bit of chest, of course you can see your head. We have a space in a horizontal recording for your hands, so you can use your body language. And another very important thing, which in my case now there is a little bit distraction of the background, however it's okay, but the best is if you have a just like a curtain like this or just wall but not too much going on behind your back like this is kind of okay what is here now because it's not that destructive but uh, always um, always 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 avoid the uh, background would have too many things because you can distract the casting director and instead of to looking at you he or she they actually gonna look on the background so that's gonna be my tip for today so guys always record horizontal don't keep camera in your hands because it's gonna be too shaky and try to have quite plain background and also if you can memorize the line and that's gonna be all for today with the acting uh, tip with the acting subject
I want to help her. I never liked that Betty anyway. Mom. No, I'm not here to tell you I told you so. I'm not. I just want you to know. I don't know. That I'm on your side. I want you to know. And what happens now? Now you have taken all that I own. Forgive me, dearest. I needed to know. Fuck them, you know? So guys, today we have another guest. Um, her name is Zuzana. She's a Slovakian actress. Hi Zuzana, how are you? <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about yourself, please? Hi, Evelina. Hi, everyone. Uh, I was born in Slovakia, where I lived until I was 18. Then I moved to France, uh, and I lived in France for four years, basically to figure out who I was. I went there on my own, and even though I wouldn't have put it that way at that time, and. Uh, Yes, and it's there where I found where I found I wanted to do theater, so I applied for the Performing Arts Academy in Prague and I got admitted, so I moved to Prague and I've lived in Prague ever since. Can you tell me for how long you are acting? I've been acting for, mm, I'd say, 15 years on and off. There were some times where I was more into directing than acting. Uh, but yeah, I think it started around 15 years ago. Did you ever went to acting university? If yes, can you tell us a little bit about this whole journey and maybe you can recommend it? So I have classical theatre training from uh, the Performing Arts Academy in Prague, which lasted five years. Uh, but I must say that most of what I know now about uh, theatre, about acting, about uh, on-camera acting, I learned it only after I finished school in different uh, master classes and courses and workshops. Okay, so then tell us what was, what is your favorite thing about study acting? So my favorite thing about uh, studying acting is probably uh, the playfulness, being a child again and being uh, allowed to, to play and being Ask to play and get crazy and uh, childish but also uh, it was the the, uh, the diving deep into yourself um, looking for the emotions and somehow connecting the body mind and soul into one whole uh, apparatus, one whole system, and discovering that uh, there's not only the rational part and that everything is deeply interconnected 
and most of it is not rational and true beauty lies and the true art actually lies beyond the rational and just learning how to access that and learning how to access that part and learning how to um, trust that part. So this is the question which I think is very very interesting and I like to ask this question because I think it's very important. Uh, can you tell me what was the reason for you to become an actress? Why you decide to become an actress? If there was some something happening in your life would actually push you to that direction or maybe you have some influence Ever since I was a child, I had a very wild imagination to the point that my classmates' parents complained about me scaring their kids by telling them horror stories that I made up. Um, so I, I wouldn't label myself as an actress only. What I would label myself would be a storyteller. And that is one of the most important things that that captured me uh, in the theater and uh, in acting. Uh, the other thing is the the ability and the space, uh, the opportunity to to feel and to express emotions, which for many of us, especially those growing up in Eastern European countries uh, is not uh, that natural as kids. Most of us uh, had our emotions dismissed or invalidated by our parents or we were shamed for feeling them or expressing them or we were told that we shouldn't feel <clears throat> we shouldn't feel the way we feel and what i love about acting is that not only you can find your emotions and express them but most of all uh, you have them validated by the audience or by the director so these are the most important things to me. Can you tell me, do you prefer to be a theater actress or maybe film actress or maybe just small screen? Not maybe just, but small screen TV actress? I love theater. I love the magic of the stage, feeling the, the wood of the stage under your feet and walking the line between the real world and the fictional world and I love the the chemistry between the audience and the stage and the actors. I love the sheer adrenaline before the show and the huge gush of relief and emotions after the show uh, which is sort of like a social um, event shared shared event shared experience so that's why I will always want to do theater uh, the reason why I, I would also like to uh, become a TV series regular is mm, it's more like uh, rational reasons uh, first of all, it's to learn the craft and to become really, really at ease and comfortable with doing it. And uh, the second reason is to get known to, to get some kind of um, to get your own public, your own uh, fans or followers on social media, uh, to, to have some people 
who are interested in what you might have to say um, in case you have some experience and wisdom and ideas and opinions that you want to share and that resonate with uh, with some people it's really it would be really nice to find to find uh, one's own public to share it uh, and of course the uh, the last reason would be the money which is really helpful let's be honest and I totally admit to it it's natural to want to be uh, rewarded for your work as, um, as theater doesn't reward you that much in terms of money so it's a little compensation so um, ideally for me it would be the combination of two tv shows and theater to sort of get the benefits of both and to be able to share different types of uh, content and uh, emotions Okay, uh, can you tell me, what do you think about fame? Is it this thing, is it that whole fame, is important for you? So I wouldn't say fame or popularity uh, is important to me in and of itself. I would rather say that it would be nice to be able to use it as a means to to get your message through, to let people know uh, your work, to let people know that you're good at what you're doing. And um, later on, when you already have uh, some fun base, when you are already well known, you might move from your work and your art to uh, other areas like letting people know about the causes that you're burning for like um, rescuing animals or uh, spreading mental health awareness or something that you're interested in and um, you want to do something with and this might actually help you to get more people involved in those causes and in those ideas and and spread them and share them so this is basically um, what I would wish for if I think in terms of fame let's say that nothing gonna happen for the next 10 years nothing major you know um do you have any plans of changing career for something different <laughs> so i think i'm already too old to be asked this question because i've been in the business for let's say yeah 10 years more than 10 years uh, on and off and then there have been times where I was successful or relatively successful and there were times where I was down there were even times where I had to quit totally only to discover that I cannot live without it and as I said um, I I don't really think in terms of career of course if you think in terms of career you have to think uh, you have to think breakthrough or some major uh, event that happens to you which will then like spiral up um, your career and uh, it's gonna be only good from from then on but um, it's not 100% true I know people that had a breakthrough and then they went from role to role for let's say three years four years five years but then they went back to square one so there's really no guarantee 
so I think what I, I what I rather what I rather think is um, I take it in I think in terms of rather purpose than career because as I said I think uh, I have something inside me that wants to create beauty and and tell stories and share uh, feelings and it doesn't matter if if I'm successful or not or if I if I got if I get cast in uh, big movies or in TV or in or if I'm just playing uh, independent theater it will always be there so I think uh, no matter what happens, I will always be doing this, whether it's acting, um, theater, TV, singing, whatever, I, I will always have this drive in me, uh, no matter what happens. And it, it might mean that I might have to quit for a while and come back later, but I think there's something inherent to me and I cannot call it only career, it's something more than career. Uh, so yeah. And um, of course when you're when you're 20 it's it's great to to go to auditions, to try to sort of like run around, be everywhere and look for a part, look for roles, look for jobs. But once you get older, it becomes really exhausting. First of all, not everyone has the mindset to, to handle, not everyone has the inner groundedness and inner stability and the support of loved ones um, that would allow them to to navigate this world of ups and downs and and exhilaration and disappointments and competition and sometimes not really nice uh, relationships. So it's not for everyone, definitely. That's one thing, and the other thing is if you only do this, you realize that you're totally at the mercy of um, whatever happens. Uh, casting agents, directors, you, you're like a, just a feather flow, flowing and blo mm, you know, this flying in, in the wind and you can't control anything. It's like total powerlessness in in this state. If even if you're a cleaner, you at least can put the hard work in and you see that the floor is clean and that there is some result. But if you're an actor, you can put all the hard work in, you can have all the talent talent in the world, but you're still at the mercy of of their decision. So I would advise to every young actor that is like over 25 years old to find something where you can take your power back, where you can have control. Um, whether it is creating small business but like totally different uh, area, not not art, not theater, but something that can generate money and something that you can have control of or have just have a, another job if it allows you to be flexible enough to to go to auditions or which would be ideal have a project that is artistic and that at the same time can generate money and that at the same time you're in total control of and this is where I'm now right now in this in this 
stage of my life or career. So I'm creating something that is mine. Um, even though it is um, performing arts, so it won't probably generate as much money as um, an IT uh, business would. So I think that's a big realization after a while of being in the business. Yeah, have something that is yours and that you have total control of to feel to feel your power. Because otherwise feeling powerless and at the mercy of the world is really frustrating and depressing and it can beat you down. What is your biggest achievement so far? So I could say that uh, my achievements lately have been, uh, I don't know, I had a bigger part in a feature movie in a foreign production and I play with the Prague Shakespeare Company since uh, recently. But what I would like to consider as achievements is more some inner, some inner progress, some inner work, like some insights and inner breakthroughs that you have at different stages of your career in terms of uh, insights into acting, accessing some, something inside yourself that you couldn't uh, access before. So these are the real milestones for me. Do you have any favorite actress or actor? Of course I do. Uh, and I have many and every time I watch something I'm like, oh my god, this is the best, <laughs> the best actor. Um, but li right lately I was thinking about um, the different approaches to acting. Like my one of my favorite, all-time favorite actors is Matthew McConaughey. And when I compare him to, for example, Anthony Hopkins, is in terms of um, how they grasp their character, it's very fascinating because you see that Matthew McConaughey just transforms himself completely. To, to be the character, like the exterior, the gestures, the voice, um, the body language, the, um, like the work with the body, like getting fatter or, or more muscular or skinnier. It's like the exterior transformation and it's awesome. And it works, it totally works. While Anthony Hopkins doesn't transform himself um, externally at all he is always himself and it works too it's amazing it's fascinating too so this is really interesting and this is really interesting to think about um, what kind of actor am I is it possible can you only be one of those two types or can you be both in like can you work one way in, in one role I can work the other way for, for the other role so this is really interesting to think about uh, yeah can you tell me do you at the moment have any personal project you're running like an acting project you know vlog maybe like myself or maybe vlog maybe you're writing or maybe small production of some you know those short films no, I don't have any special uh, social media project for myself, but as I'm, I don't have an agent, so I'm my own agent for now, I do post a lot of um, videos, clips and self-tapes and scenes and monologues online. And now the last question. Can you tell me what is your plans for the for the rest of the year? So I just finished shooting yesterday. It was a short movie 
um, and I had the lead part so it was quite exhausting and demanding um, but it was a very very pleasant project very um, fulfilling so right now I'll just um, I just take a breather, I'll take a break. I'm going to hike in the Alps. I'm going to do a 10 day hike around the Mont Blanc mountain. And afterwards, I already have some English theater shows scheduled and the future movie where I play the mother of the, of the main character. And then later on, we'll see. Thank you very much, Zuzana. Thank you very much for being here with us. I'm very grateful and I'm very happy that you um, that you decide to get part in the actress block and you decided to be my guest. I really hope that we're gonna have a chance in the future to meet in person and maybe we'll repeat that interview again, but this time, you know, like face to face, that will be brilliant. Okay guys, so Susanna also gonna sit on the poem chair. And I want to go to your party and dance still on black. And give you takes that you don't listen to. And watch great movies. And watch terrible movies. I look at your photos and wish I'd known you forever. And hear your voice in my ear and feel your skin on my skin. And not understand why you think I'm rejecting you when I'm not rejecting you. And wonder how you would ever think I would ever reject you. And somehow, somehow, somehow communicate the overwhelming, unconditional, overpowering, undying, all-encompassing, heart-enriching, mind-expanding, ongoing, never-ending love I have for you. Thank you, Susanna, one more time for the whole interview and thank you for this beautiful, beautiful poem. I am uh, crossing my fingers for you um, and I hope all of your dreams come true and everything what you dream about is going to happen. Um, and definitely I'm going to observe your career and hopefully to see you soon in person. So I want to say again, thank you, Evelina, for having me. And thank you everyone for listening. I hope uh, I said something that could be of some value to you. And I wish you a lot of luck in your acting career. Bye. Okay guys, so that's all for today. Thank you very so much. Have a great Sunday and see you next week. And you know, as always, if you like, thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs down. Leave us a comment here, ring that bell and see you next week.
Bye.